So some people on the DDD Discord are talking about the Bladest ban list, which I will not be reacting to, um, and they are saying that the ban of Baron de Fleur is, you know, some sort of nerf to DDD. I mean, obviously not intentionally, but, you know, we're kind of losing from the ban list as a consequence of uh, Baron being removed. Um, and I figured this was a good opportunity to finally put out my video about why Baron de Fleur was never that good in this deck to begin with, um, why I think it was always bait, why... Uh, making High Caesar on the 5th Summon was better in most scenarios. I recorded this a long time ago, never put it out, but I think it's time to revisit this since people are talking about it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the standard Baron combo. Uh, everyone should know this by now. If you don't, that's fine. This is for you. Uh, but I just want to show this so we know we, what the baseline is with, with Baron. So the way that starts is by getting a... Three card hand involving Swirl Slime, uh, you know, a Griffin Copernicus type setup. Uh, this three card combo, it can begin with Gate, and for the purposes of this video, I will be beginning with Gate. Uh, it works out a little differently if you don't draw any contracts, um, but I still think it's going to end up being better in the long term. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show the fundamental differences between making Baron on the 5th summon and making High Caesar on the 5th summon, and why I think making High Caesar is almost always better. So, we're going to start by making Swirl Slime, uh, then, or getting Swirl Slime off gate, we can Swirl Slime fuse with Griffin into Genghis, then we special the uh, Copernicus with the Swirl Slime effect, triggering both of these, reviving the Griffin, Copernicus can dump a necro slime and then griffin can trigger and grab orthros from here we normal summon orthros and because we've normal summoned the orthros we've bypassed its restriction that uh not activates but applies as soon as it's special summoned um and we can make baron de fleur on the fifth summon now what we're getting out of this is on summon five we are now uh, you know, in possession of an Omni Negate that can negate a Nibiru. Uh, or if we make Gilgamesh next, as we are going to in pretty much every scenario, if they try to activate Infinite Impermanence or Effect Veiler on this Gilgamesh, we have a Baron Nefer to negate that as well. Now, I will not go all the way through this combo because this video will take too long if I do that, um, but... Basically what happens when you make Baron de Fleur is you are giving up one of either your High Caesar or your Siegfried in order to, to um, protect your Gilgamesh and protect yourself from Nibiru, that sort of thing. Uh, so the trade-off is, you know, you lose one of these end bosses for Baron de Fleur's protection. Uh, the other thing to take into account here is that uh, if you use Baron de Fleur as protection, there's not going to be anything besides, like, a Griffin, maybe, um, that you want to revive on the standby phase since its negate isn't live. So you're not getting as much value out of this as you might um, in, in other decks. Um, now, that's still good though, right? Get, protecting your Gilgamesh, getting you to your, your next boss. Um, but let me show you what happens if you just forego Baron de Fleur entirely. And this is all gonna be recorded in one take, so uh, bear with me as I reset my cards here. But we're going to go back to the position where we have searched our third piece off of gate. Alright, and we're going to put these things back. So, what if instead I were to normal summon the Copernicus, send Necro Slime, then activate Swirl Slime, fusing away the Griffin, into a Genghis, activate Necro Slime, banishing itself in the Swirl Slime for the second Genghis, triggering the first Genghis to revive the Griffin. Griffin can now search Headhunt, and on Summon 5, we overlay the two Genghis into Wave High King Caesar. Now, we are just as protected from Nibiru as we were before uh, at the same time, but now we have Headhunt, uh, which is one of our most powerful pieces of disruption, especially non-monster-based. We're going into new format. I mean, not that this really matters. This This is true regardless, but especially going into a new format, people might be trying out different types of things, so we're in a hand trap meta, people might be more willing to try board breakers, uh, which means headhunt is going to have a lot more value as a completely different like type of disruption, right? It's not a monster based piece of negation, instead it's, you know, a trap. So, what happens then, 
if we make Gilgamesh. All right, from here, uh, you know, standard combo, everyone knows we're going to end on Machinex, Siegfried, High King Caesar, Headhunt, uh, full combo. That's everything we could ever want in this deck. Uh, now, the thing you lose when you go for High King Caesar instead of Baron here is that you can't protect this Gilgamesh from Imperm. But what if I told you I don't care at all? If this Gilgamesh resolves, I end on Siegfried, Machinex, Headhunt, High Caesar. But what if this Gilgamesh doesn't resolve? If it gets Imperm, then I say, okay, that's fine. I make Machinex on top of it. I said Headhunt, and I pass. What have I lost? Exactly Siegfried? You know, uh, two uh, activations of Machinex? It, it's really not the third and fourth Machinex activations that get you in most scenarios. So what you've ended on here is almost the same board, you just don't have the Siegfried. Uh, which, wait a minute, when I made Baron de Fleur, I had to give that up anyway. On top of that, I gave up the Headhunt, which is probably the most powerful piece of disruption in this entire deck. Okay, okay, well, that's already kind of interesting, but what if I told you that it gets even worse for Baron de Fleur when you start considering that your opponent might draw multiple hand traps? In any sort of hand trap meta, uh you're going to be contending with these combo decks that want to build a board, and any combo deck that's at the top of the metagame is going to be able to play through Nib on its own. What you have to do is build to try to draw two hand traps, right? You have to draw like Imperm Nibiru, Ash Nibiru, something that's going to weaken your opponent's board to the point where Nibiru ends their turn. Uh, well, if I were to go for Baron de Fleur, and I'll just quickly go through the combo again, Boom, boom, banish that, summon that, to uh, revive this, search the Orthros, send the Necro Slime, normal summon, and then synchro away into Baron. This, sorry, this right here, summon five, this is a perfect opportunity for our opponent to try to Nibiru. And if we try to negate it with Baron de Fleur, and they have an Imperm or a Veiler, they chain it to Baron, our whole board gets wiped, and we are left with nothing. Well, what happens if we go back? And instead of doing that, I'll just put us in that position. And we make Wave Hiking Caesar on the fifth summon. They try to do the same thing. Okay, well, they activate Nibiru. We attempt to negate it. And they chain Imperm to our Caesar. Our board gets wiped. Oh, and by the way, I in this case, I've searched Headhunt. Our board gets wiped, but then we can trigger Hiking Caesar, because it floats. And we can add Swamp King. Activate Swamp King. We don't really care about banishing these things anymore, because we've already gone through Caesar. So we can summon out High Genghis, make Machinex and set Headhunt. And now we have a four activation Machinex plus Headhunt, whereas with Baron into two hand traps, we would be ending on nothing. Uh, this is pretty much the gist of it. Um, any situation where you're going to be making, you know, doing Baron combo, it's usually better to make High Caesar as the fifth summon. Um, it's It leaves you with more flexibility uh, in terms of your, your board afterwards. Um, and it provides better insulation from disruption than Baron actually did. Uh, so I, people are talking about, you know, replacing Baron with Bright Armageddon, which was always kind of the budget option. Um, but I don't really see a need to do that. You can still play this card because it's good into some matchups, like Runic has a hard time with it. Um, you know, if, if you think we're going into a, a format where a lot of the disruption is targeted, then this card can be a pain in the ass for them to deal with. But there's really no need to replace Baron de Fleur with this because there was really no need to play Baron de Fleur in the first place. Uh, the use cases for it were pretty few and far between. Uh, the typical use case that people cited for it was actually just worse than if you played with your in-archetype bosses instead. Now, admittedly, uh, this is contingent upon you actually drawing a contract. You'll notice that in this these scenarios, I started with two of the pieces of the three-card combo and uh, Dark Contract with the Gate as opposed to just drawing all three pieces. 
the way it shakes out, if you don't draw all three pieces, or sorry, if you do draw all three pieces instead of um, instead of drawing gate to search one of them, is that in the play where you get impermed, right? So let's go back to that. These are on the field. We have this, and we have headhunt, which I just put back in the deck because I'm a dumbass. All right. We have this here, and we attempt to make Gilgamesh. Whoop! Dropping things. And they imperm it. Sorry, this gate's not here. Then, you know, we're, we can make Machinex, but there's really no point because we don't have any contracts to fuel its effect. So, we're just probably leaving the Gilgamesh here since it can float. And we're ending on High Caesar plus Headhunt pass, right? Uh, so, you know, if, if you had Baron here and you negated this Gilgamesh, or sorry, you negated the Imperm that was attempting to negate this Gilgamesh, then you would not have Headhunt because you used Griffin Effect to search Orthros. Um, but you could then, you know, set your scales and make another play, right? You could go... Uh, if you play to Orthros, which I actually don't, um, you could, you know, pendulum summon your guys and do your standard rank 4 play that ends on one of your bosses. Um, now, I don't really think that's better, to be honest, because this Baron is not live. Your, your only piece of disruption from that point is going to be the contract that you search off Gilgamesh for Machinex plus High Caesar, um, as opposed to High Caesar and Headhunt, which, like, I don't know. It, 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 in that scenario, it comes down to whether you value the, the Headhunt or the High Caesar more. But in scenarios where you do draw any contract, right, it doesn't just have to be Gate to search the third piece. It could be the three pieces plus... Swamp King, the three pieces plus gate, the three pieces plus uh, patent license. And you're going to be ending on a board that is better into zero hand traps, into one hand trap, and into two hand traps than if you went for Baron de Fleur. So, moral of the story, don't fret um, that Baron de Fleur is banned. This deck hasn't really gotten nerfed as a consequence. Um, really, the only... The, the biggest loss that we've suffered as a consequence of Baron de Fleur getting banned is the Armored Xyz variant, the Kali Yuga Lock. Um, you don't really have the insulation for the Kali Yuga Lock that you would have liked to. Uh, but honestly, that's for the best. That version was only ever okay. Um, and, you know, it's, it's better for the game that it's not there. That it <laughs> you can still do it, but... It's going to get disrupted more to the point where you might as well try to play lower to the ground or, you know, figure out new things. I'm going to be testing out some weird, funky builds of this deck to try to um, make it more modern. But, you know, our card pool is pretty limited. Until we get new support, there's not a whole lot we can do with or without Baron. But this card, you don't really need it. It was always bait. And I'm tired of people pretending it wasn't. Um... That's it. That's all I had to say. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.